we just wanted to recount a story that depicts the truism, music matters. This is particularly important today when we hear so often of various state governments abandoning music as a course in high school. Uh, my father, who came from an agricultural family in Smithville, Clarendon, Jamaica, uh, which now now West Indies, but previously known as the British West Indies. He completed his schooling in Jamaica and immigrated to New York City. And what year was that? This was at age 16. Uh, in uh, being 16, he was eligible for further schooling in New York. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out the year, 19... Do you know what year? I don't know, remember the year, but it's not terribly important. Okay. Um, he registered for um, Wadley, W-A-D-L-E-I-G-H, high school in New York City, uh, which had a program in New York for high school students in music. He became, uh, from a background which had some small exposure to the guitar, he was strongly attracted to the violin as an instrument of choice and was fortunate enough, fortunate enough to become known to the violin teacher at his school, whose name was Dr. Felix W-E-I-R, where uh, a violinist of some prominence within his own uh, black community. Um, oh, I'm sorry, was this a black high school? Yes. No, it was, it was a general high school, but uh, he happened to be a black um, uh, violinist, and there were very, very few in those days. Nevertheless, he completed his courses and became so, so proficient indeed at the art of classical violin that he had the effrontery to go to Carnegie Hall to apply for a job in the pits. Being black, of course, his application was, was immediately ignored. Uh, at that time, 1929, the Great Depression in America was at its beginning. And being black, the only jobs then available to blacks were as a dishwasher, a short order cook, um, a, a sweeper, or a steam presser. I have a question. How did they know he was black through his application? It, all, all applications invariably ask for your race. Oh, for the race. Yeah. Being unable to get a job and having three children uh, at that time, he decided that he would return to his native land, Jamaica, uh, with his newfound um, classical violin skills and uh, try to make a living for his family. He boarded the United Fruit Company ship on which he had arrived and returned to Jamaica and to the home of his parents uh, in Smithville, Jamaica. Uh, uh, he went back and forth between the capital of Jamaica, which was Kingston at the time, and his um, um, agricultural background in, in Smithville, and he played for all dignitaries who arrived in Jamaica. He played for the, all the dignitaries of the church, the dignitaries of the government. Everybody clapped, but nobody paid. 
and try as he might, he was totally unable to make a living to support his family. His father, an agriculturist, tried to persuade him to go back into agriculture um, by um, offering him land and money and whatever was necessary to become an agricultural specialist. Uh, but he was not for that because agriculture was not in his blood. Music was in his blood. And so, uh, eventually his father died and he purchased land under the um, Michael Manley land settlement scheme which had arrived from Mr. Manley expropriating all the possessions of land that were British owned in Jamaica and subdividing this land into small plots uh, with the hope that the entire thing would become a conglomerate of small land farmers who by sharing their prowess and their labor would produce sufficient agricultural products to be exported and make Jamaica an independent agricultural uh, uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, uh, he first started by acquiring um, quarts of uh, seed of citrus fruits, uh, planting those, wash them until they attained the height of one foot, and then um, acquired um, buds of Valencia orange trees with which he grafted the, the new plants that he planted. Uh, when those had grown to a sufficient size, he cut off the the the, the underlying uh, citrus fruit and allowed the Valencia orange to grow uninhibited into Valencia trees. Um, and from that, uh, it became so. Um, um, rich in production that he was able to supply all the hotels and dignitary houses in Jamaica from the product of his agricultural ex exploitation. When I, had, when I in Jamaica was age four, when asked, as most little boys are, what I wanted to be, I invariably said a doctor, even though there was no member of my family who was a doctor. Uh, and my father remembered this, and every time I asked him to teach me the violin, he would say, no, the violin has been unkind to me. You have expressed the desire to become a doctor, and with my efforts and with your efforts, you will become a doctor. And so when I had completed uh, school, um, the junior school there in Jamaica uh, and was now eligible for the higher schools in Jamaica. Um, my father took up his violin one more time and went to play at the local Catholic church. Upon completion he asked the priest in control whether he would mediate in getting me into one of the preferred high schools in Jamaica, which happened to be a Jesuit Catholic high school. The priest immediately picked up the telephone upon hearing my father's um, um, expertise at the violin and recommended that I be admitted to St. George's College, 
one of the prominent schools in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, uh, without hesitation, the receiving priest immediately acquiesced, and I was now a student at St. George's. This was the first time that music played a part in my advancement towards my desired goal of being oh, a physician. Oh, okay, now I understand. <laughs> right. yeah. um, I completed St. George's uh, College, um, never acquired any skill of the violin, uh, and proceeded from there to Fordham University in New York City, where I was immediately accepted based upon my academic performance and completed the four years of pre-medical um, courses required for entrance into medical school. Upon completing those four years and applying for, for um, medical school in New York, um, I had the unfortunate uh, experience of living in a, in a time when there was only one black student uh, admitted to any given medical school um, in any given four-year period. And so I had no favorable response to my, my applications for medical school. A friend of my father's and a, student, a violent student of my father's from Jamaica, hearing of my plight, um, took me to Washington, D.C. and introduced me to the dean of the medical school of Howard University College of Medicine. The the, the, um, the, I was, the, the, the dean was favorably impressed with my credentials and accepted me as, as a prospective student to medical school. However, in Fordham, I had also taken a course in ROTC, the Reserve Officers Training Course, uh, which then made me uh, first lieutenant, I'm sorry, a second lieutenant upon graduation from Howard. After completing, completing my, uh, my Fordham University course, um, I was drafted into the United, Air Force, United States Air Force as a second lieutenant at McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. When I went to Washington and was accepted by the dean, it was with the proviso that I would be released from the Air Force to attend um, medical school. Um, a friend of my friend, of my father's violent student, um, uh, who was also a graduate from Howard University in Washington, uh, and who was the one who took me down to introduce me to the dean, had a friend who worked as a secretary to Admiral Byrd of, 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 of South Pole fame uh, and, and presented my plight and asked that he intercede on my behalf. Uh, he then completed a form entitled Air Force Regulation 36-22, which was entitled Release Essentials to National Health and Interest. With this documentation, I was released from the Air Force and permitted to attend medical school at Howard University. I completed my four years of medical school and was accepted for an internship at Walter Reed Army Hospital. The internship lasted one year, whereupon I was asked uh, since I still was obligated to the Air Force for two years, I was asked where I would like to go. And I expressed a desire to go to Tokyo Army Hospital in Japan. Upon arriving at Tokyo Army Hospital, I was told I was not needed there, but was desperately needed in Okinawa. 
uh, which is a Japanese territory, uh, won over in World War II by the Americans. I went to Okinawa and spent two years in the United States Air Force as a general physician. Upon completion, I returned to New York and having sorted out, decided that I would serve humanity best by um, pursuing a course in obstetrics and gynecology. In New York, I applied again to all the, the hospitals, only to be told that my application was too late and that I should uh, spend a year doing a fellowship and then try again the following year. I decided that I had already spent too much time away from my pursuit and therefore uh, would continue searching for a, a residency position in OBGYN. My brother-in-law, who then worked at a brand new hospital in Queens called Amherst Hospital, said, why don't you try my hospital? It's a new hospital. It certainly is, must be in need of uh, of applicants. And so I went to that hospital and put in my request for a residency position in OBGYN. Um, the person to whom the secretary spoke on the telephone must have asked her what my name was because she said, McClymont. Uh, thereupon she hung up the phone and said, he said, wait right here. And when the person came down who would be approving my application, it happened to be my, my classmate from Howard University. And therefore, I was automatically <laughs> in the <laughs> residency program. Uh, I completed that program in 1964, at which time the 23 hospitals within the hospital system of the Health and Hospitals Corporation of the City of New York was in dire distress due to a very poor reputation for all their hospitals. Uh, the, 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 the then uh, mayor of New York, uh, Mayor Lindsay, went to Columbia University and persuaded uh, Dr. T-R-U-S-S-E-L-L, -S -S -E Dr. Trussell um, of, the, of, the, of the Public Health Department to take a sabbatical from his position at Columbia and clean up the so-called mess that the 23 city hospitals were in. He acquiesced and closed all but 13 of the city hospitals. The 13 that remained, he affiliated with strong teaching hospitals. For example, Harlem went to Columbia Bellevue went to NYU, Elmhurst went to Mount Sinai, and so on. And uh, thereafter, um, uh, the, 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 the hospital system at the time throughout the country was relegated to the positions of the town physicians and the gown physicians. In other words, those who were academicians or affiliated with medical schools were, were gown physicians, and those who were practitioners in the community were town physicians. So the town physicians, of which there were 23 at Elmhurst Hospital when Mount Sinai came in, um, promptly quit their positions and uh, I was one of those very few who remained with Mount Sinai. So when I went to the uh, director of the department of OPGYN, delegated by Mount Sinai at Elmhurst, he says, welcome. We've heard good news about you. We're, we would be happy to have you stay on. And so I joined the academic staff of Mount Sinai as as an assistant professor in the Department of Obstetric and Gynecology. I stayed with Mount Sinai 
for 57 years practicing obstetrics and gynecology and training young physicians, seven per year, in that specialty. For me, music mattered. When my father, uh, through his uh, artistry, his viol violinistic artistry, was able to get me into a very prestigious uh, high school in Kingston. Secondly, um, his pupil in the violin was sufficiently persuaded by her recollection of her experience with my father as a violinist that she, without hesitation, drove me from New York City to Washington, D.C. to introduce me to the dean of the medical school and to persuade him that my background was sufficient to warrant acceptance. Now, what would have happened to me um, had music not played a part? Well, my father was from a father who was agricultural. And the, pers the perspective, the prospect for my father was to become, like his father, an agricultural person. But his music kept him out of it. He was so persuaded that his music kept him out of agriculture. And he, in turn, kept me out of agriculture by his music. Huh? So when did you retire? I retired in June of 2013. At what age? At, 50, age, at, at age 88. <laughs> right. And why did you retire? I retired because I thought it was time to yield space to younger physicians. Um, That's very noble. Indeed. And um, I hadn't lost my skills. I, had, uh, I taught obstetrics in all detail, and I taught gyne gynecologic surgery in all detail, um, and was well received, and indeed have so many physicians trained by me throughout the entire United States today. I didn't play the violin because my father was so disappointed at not uh, being afforded the opportunity to fully exhaust his excellence as a violinist that he thought it would have been um, a futile adventure on my part to pursue the violin. My father seemed to have been naturally born to the violin. Um, remember, he was from an agricultural family who had no experience at all in music. And yet, to have arrived in New York at the age of 16, and in a relatively short time, acquired the classical skills that he did in the violin, was unbelievable. And you heard him play. I, interestingly, while he was struggling to make a living for his family, oftentimes he would come home with nothing. Mm. And we went to sleep on violin music oh. every night. Mm. And I can still remember that. Do you have any of his um, music recorded? In, in the days in which he excelled, the classical violinists of repute were Fritz Kreisler, Yehudi Menuhin, and Yasha Heifetz. Those um, were recorded, and uh, the recordings are available today on Pandora, and on YouTube, so that examples of, of my father's prowess would be exemplified by 
listening to the recordings of those three mm. classical artists. Did he compose? No, he never did. He never had the opportunity to pursue unimpeded the full um, abilities of the violin. So even though his dream was not fulfilled, yeah. his dream made it possible, possible for, for years. Me. Exactly right. That's that is correct. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> it's wonderful to meet you. <laughs> Music matters. Music matters.